Hi, I'm Steve Matchkin, Director of Sales and Marketing at Chafe Marine. I'm here with Fred Cook, President of Chafe Marine today. Talk about some of the problems we see in the field when going to boatyards, marinas, and talking to riggers. We get a lot of questions, Fred, about the difficulty of replacing old chain plates. Why is it so hard? You have to remember that a lot of the boats were built back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. That's the bulk of our fleet out there in the marinas. And while inspecting the boats, a lot of the boats have been maintained. The fiberglass looks good, the wood, the teak still looks good. One of the things we notice on the chain plates that come back is that they're suffering from wear and fatigue. That's the first elements. And the holes are becoming elongated due to pin wear with the rigging moving around inside of it. The other thing we often are very concerned about is that the chain plate's been under very high load and moving a little bit, which means that we have cyclical loads and fatigue that could be creeping into the part. That's compounded by the fact that water can get in under chain plate cover and get into the core of the deck. And a lot of these boats are a sandwich on deck of fiberglass, plywood, or balsa core. And water gets in here, it gets wet, it stays wet, it's salt water in there. We don't have a lot of oxygen in there. And that's the perfect environment for having stress crack corrosions, which forces the material grains apart. And that's really dangerous because it might not show down below, it might not show on deck. And what'll happen is it'll look fine, but you go out sailing and it's, the chain plate just pulls apart because there's not enough cross-sectional area of good material left. Fred, how hard is it for us to reproduce old chain plates off of boats that are 30 to 40 years old made in large production runs? To replace these chain plates can be very difficult economically because the technology they were built in, what we would call mass production at the time, because they had a lot of boats on the production line, but to have this done at a fabrication shop is really hard manual labor. So Fred, what exactly is a water jet machine and what are the advantages it provides us? Well, a water jet machine is a specialized machine. It's designed to cut metal and it uses ultra high pressurized water uh, flowing from a very small nozzle at over 50,000 PSI. And just before it departs the nozzle, garnet grit is introduced to do actually the cutting on the metal. So you're forcing this garnet grit against the metal under very high water pressure. And that cuts the part very, very efficiently. This is really important on complex parts, which would be very difficult to do in a bandsaw. Very slow to do complex shaped parts and chain plates, for instance, and do those uh, with a bandsaw. And then you'd have to finish a really bad edge. So the edge we get is, is virtually sandblasted in nature, very smooth. And the other thing is we can actually use the water jet to put these holes in. And it's very efficient at punching a hole through the material and then making this hole around and then getting all the hole spacings correct as we go down apart. So we're not drilling and drilling of stainless steel is very slow and that adds cost. So the machine is very efficient at removing material and giving us good edges. Another big advantage is that the part is not heated up and it's not sensitized, which would make it more prone to corrosion and might even deform the part. So the, it's just ideal for making fabrications like chain plates in short volume. So here's some examples of some of the chain plates we get back from our customers to replace with our new water jet. These are all from a 30 to 40 year old boat and you can tell some of them have different signs of aging and some of them were, had some questionable construction techniques like such as this one with a weld and that was bent and welded back together. This we would cut out of a solid sheet of material now all the way around with our water jet. Some of the other ones are more obvious like this is a chain plate from a Cal 33 and you can see a crack is visible right here through the microscope. Some of these cracks that look very small to the naked eye are actually quite large and you can tell by the corrosion inside the crack that they've been around for quite a while. This chain plate for example was quite close to failure and they're glad they caught it on time. Now this is the stem head fitting from that same boat and as you can tell that where the stem eye was attached to the head stay it's elongated this hole and stretched it out a bit. So those are some of the signs that you'll see that it's time to replace your chain plates. So if this hasn't convinced you to check your chain plates, you probably should in the near future. So Fred, we've decided that we need a new chain plate. What is the process to go through and order this chain plate? 
Well, I would say that if you're trying to use the old holes that are in the boat or in the bulkhead, that the, you need to get the chain plate to us. Ship the chain plate to us. We can then take dimensions off this. As I mentioned earlier, in many cases, we see progressive errors coming down here. They punch these holes and then they put that punched hole over a pin. And then what happens, we got a progressive error. So what might look like and measure to be two inches between each one of these holes, actually as it goes down the part, it gets down here where this hole is off by over a quarter of an inch. So we can pick that up and we can reproduce it so you don't have to grow new holes. And in fact, we've done that here on this new chain plate and everything matches up. The holes match up even though they're not perfectly spaced. We were able to match every one of the holes to the old holes. So that's a big advantage we have um, in doing it this way. If that's not important, if you don't have old holes to match up, uh, then we can work off of just about any sketch and or drawing files from AutoCAD and SolidWorks. So just let us know what it is. We could also use some additional information on finish levels. Our standard finish here puts it through the Schaefer finishing process where we tumble these parts in heavy stone and then put it through an ever finer media in order to get the part up and shining and looking consistent, deburred. It's a very nice finish when we're all done with it. If you have places where Depending on your boat and your requirements, you want it mirror bright. Let's say you want it to be mirror bright on deck. Just identify the areas that you want to have hand polished and we'll take it the next step, which is a really super shiny chrome look finish. I think the, beyond this kind of communication, let us know what else we can do to make the chain plate even better part for you. Um, we're a fully capable machine shop. We have a broad range of technologies here and we can do just about anything. Um, this is a chain plate we're making for main cat, and it's a difficult profile if you were gonna try and do it with a band saw or milling that part, we'd be very uh, price prohibitive. And then in addition to that, they wanted it curved to match the hull sides of the cat. So we have what would otherwise be a very difficult part to do that is made possible by the introduction of our new water jet machine. Fred, thank you. You've given us a lot of information to go with today. We here at Schaefer, we're all boat owners as well. We've done these projects. We understand how difficult they can be. We're here trying to make it easier for you and safer for you. Don't hesitate to call us or email us with any questions.